Kane Hodder returns as Victor Crowley in the sequel slash retread. Yeah, it doesn't do anything new or especially captivating. It actually takes place just seconds after the first movie with the sole survivor, Mary Beth, who is now being played by Danielle Harris, another horror veteran, escaping from the monster's clutches. It brings back a couple of roles who just had minor cameos in the previous film. John Carl Beekler reprises the role of Jack Cracker, the crazy redneck you might have seen guzzling on his own piss in the first film. At first he wants to help Mary Beth until he realizes who she is and kicks her out of his place. Apparently he made some kind of deal with Crowley, but too bad for him, it doesn't exactly pan out. Mary Beth's next stop is to visit Reverend Zombie, the cynical witch doctor who was played by Tony Todd in the first place. Zombie is that guy you see in every monster movie, the one guy who knows the monster's history and theorizes about how to take him out. He gives Mary Beth a bit of a history lesson, revealing that her father, who Robert Englund played, was one of the kids who accidentally killed Crowley. Mary Beth decides to return to the swamp, which is a really stupid plot point, guys, to both seek out her dead family members and get revenge on Crowley. Reverend Zombie rounds up a local militia to accompany them back to the swamp. With the biscuits and the chicken, wants a biscuit, for the biscuit is me. As soon as they get back, everything seems familiar. The hunters, most of who want nothing to do with Crowley, decide to just stick it out until morning, and eventually they get killed off by Crowley once again. Victor Crowley has a new bag of tricks, and unlike the first film where they revealed the best death scene pretty early on, here the deaths become more elaborate as time goes on. One of my favorite scenes is when Crowley comes out with this giant ass chainsaw. I don't know if there's an actual tool like this, or if it was just a prop designed specifically for this film, but either way I think someone's trying to compensate for something. If this was an anime, he'd have spiky hair and a long broadsword. This thing is wicked cool as he hacks up two guys at once. It still feels like a rerun, but I have to admit, that I was not expecting. There are some gruesome deaths, but when it's all said and done, it's nothing special. It uses all of the same locations from the first film, and while it attempts to add to Crowley's backstory, it doesn't seem like it's enough to make him a more interesting character. The one other thing I'll comment on is Danielle Harris. Harris is a fantastic actress, but here, I didn't feel she was given enough to do, and she does carry most of the film. She spends the majority of her scenes crying or panicking right up to the final scenes where Reverend Zombie carries her away from Crowley and she's helpless. She was more threatening as a little girl in the Halloween films. It was good to see another familiar face added to the ensemble, but I just think the character could have been written better. If you liked the first one, sure, why not? 